Good morning. Uh, my name is Johannes Schwemmer. I'm the director of Fusion for Energy, and it's a great pleasure for me to pre present at Soft 2020, the first virtual Soft ever. So let's hope that this is an advantage, and we will get much more attendance than usual. I will talk about Fusion for Energy's progress with the ITER project and some others, and I hope you find this interesting. I brought some nice videos for you. Uh, we're trying to cover this uh, from a perspective of people who are new, like just studying plasma physics, while others know a lot about ITER, may find some boring, so it's a bit of a compromise. First of all, I'd like to briefly explain what Fusion for Energy is. Not everybody knows what an EU agency is. So Fusion for Energy was set up 2007 as an EU public organization called a joint undertaking for 35 years. Our headquarters is in Barcelona, Spain, with offices in Cadarache, France, where we build ITER, in Garching, Germany, close to IPP, and in Okasho, Japan, uh, where we have a research center together with our Japanese partner. This is the location that was initially planned for ITER in Japan. Our staff is about 460, mostly engineers, and we have used a budget from the beginning to 2020 of 6.8 billion. And uh, we are in the process of receiving uh, the EU approval for a budget from 21 to 27 of another 5 billion. And this is mainly for the ITER project. Uh, if you look at what we are doing in terms of projects, this is the roadmap. So we have the Broader Approach project together with Japan, where the largest content is really the JT60SA upgraded superconducting tokamak. And here we are rather close to first plasma. Actually, I'll talk about that a bit later. Uh, so this is really finished in the short term. In the medium term, APRC we're building ITER with the first plasma plant for 2025 and the full for 35. Uh, in the bit longer term, uh, it's in our remit to build uh, IFMIF donors, and many of you will not know how the, what that is. That is a materials research facility uh, called Demo Oriented Neutron Source, and uh, we are currently building a test accelerator called IFMIF in the north of Japan, and this IFMIF EVEDA will demonstrate that it works, and then we will start building IFMIF donors wherever in the end it is decided. And last not least, the last project in our statutes is DEMO, uh, the next generation fusion research machine after ITER, uh, where the goal is to keep a fusion plasma that is generating energy in a constant mode, permanently, rather than only the 400 seconds that ITER is designed for. So let's get to ITER, our contributions to ITER, and um, what the status is and what we have uh, produced in terms of news since the last uh, soft was over. Uh, I will first of all talk about the first plasma systems, and then second plasma, this is how we plan, and obviously the, the urgent is not always the most important, but this is the urgent, and this is the first plasma. Uh, you see that this comprises the buildings, where Europe does 100%, the TF coils, which we share with Japan, the poloidal field coils, where we build five out of six, the pre-compression ring, we build all of those, the vacuum vessel, we share with Korea, the liquid nitrogen cryoplant, IO builds the helium part, and then we, we are currently assembling it together, and you see the ITER schedule at the bottom. And you see that a lot of dates are between now and 22 in terms of delivering the components to the ITER site. And here you see it, the wonderful ITER site uh, in, at dawn in the morning that is uh, in the French Alps, where we have 42 hectares with 39 buildings that we construct for ITER. Work started in 2010, 600 companies are involved. Here you, you saw the the uh, seismic bearings, and here you see how we build the assembly hall. This is about the time I joined the project when we were just lifting the roof of the assembly hall, a steel structure that uh, was impossible to raise very fast. 
And now this, what you see here, is not fast. It's nuclear grade, strongly reinforced concrete. And this is what we are building now, the Tokamak building. Now this is last year, adding the roof to the Tokamak building. And this is how it looks today, where you can already see this huge completed building in the middle, that is assembly hall and Tokamak building. So since the last soft, that is the big news. We have completed the Tokamak building. This is how it looked in July 2018. Uh, with this uh, bioshield in the middle, and this is how it looked in July this year. In April, um, we completed the painting work in the Tokamak pit and handed it, handed it over to IO. So this is the round structure that you saw standing alone in the first picture. Now it's completed. And here you see one of these heavy nuclear doors. Uh, which we have now completed and installed 46 of them, each weighs 60 tons in July. If you look at the toroidal field coils, this is where they are located in a tokamak, for those who don't know. And this is how big they are in terms of steel structures. Um, here you have a snapshot of uh, the production line situation. Part of it is done at ASG, superconductors in La Spezia. And then we move them to Simich, another Italian company close to Venice, uh, in order to insert the coils into the steel structure and weld the steel structure that is around it, and then fill it with resin and transport it by ship from Venice uh, to the port near Cadarache. And then it goes through a heavy uh, exceptional low transport. What you see here is basically the winding packs are all but one finished. So we have uh, the first three stages of them all completed and for the final assembly and test there is only one missing and then the work at La Spezia will already be completed. So this is, has largely progressed and you've seen pictures of that last time at Soft. Uh, then you see how the work at Simich in Ve near Venice is progressing, where we have completed two coils and already brought them to ITER.io, and the third one is just nearing completion. This is the second coil we have delivered in a wonderful night picture, when it is passing the tightest point in the ITER itinerary, uh, a transport itinerary that has been certified uh, to go from Berleton, from the port, down to Cadarache. Uh, this is a flashback, I think you've also seen this last time, on how to wind uh, the winding packs and how we produce this with a use of a lot of automation. Uh, then we get to the transport container uh, and we move them from uh, La Spezia to Simich in the area of Venice, where then the measuring starts and then the insertion into the steel structures and the highly robotized welding, closing those structures. When everything is closed, there's some final machining to make sure the tolerances are right. It is lifted. and test it. And this is how it arrives at the ETA site. Uh, now let's go to the poloidal field coils. These are the ones that surround the central solenoids, a bit like planets surround the sun. And here in this picture, you see just the cuts through the coils, which are the blue squares. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. And we produce PF2 to six, six manufactured in China, the rest in our extra factory in Kadarash, because those are so big that transport is not possible. And this is how the whole thing looks like from the outside.
This is the uh, factory for the PF coils um, with several stations and the big cranes on top um, where we start with a single winding pack then we stack them, we impregnate, integrate and here you see the arrival of the PF6 from China there, where we also do the final test in our factory this is the same diagram you see that in terms of qualification we are done with all PFs uh, three of them are we've done the winding and the impregnation now uh, the PF6 and PF5 from Kadarash, PF6 from China stacking and VPI is already done we're doing that for PF2 at the moment so this is one of the main occupations in our factory while the PF5 is in final assembly and the PF6 has arrived from China and is undergoing testing. Here you see the PF5 in the final assembly stage that will be soon ready for the testing. And this is how the cryostat looks at which, in which we do the cold testing at ATK. Uh, and we're just preparing to do this for the wonderful PF6 that our colleagues at ASIP in China have built. Uh, the pre-compression rings, uh, where we are producing six and three spares, has it been a bit of a wild project because the first manufacturer was not really able to produce PCRs that withstand the specified load. Uh, now we have this manufacturer and Knim has successfully manufactured and delivered already six of these nine PCRs. So now we get to the vacuum vessel, which many of you will know has been a project on the critical path for a while. And we have done tremendous efforts to accelerate the work on uh, the sectors that we are providing, which are five of the nine. The others come from HHI in, in Korea. Uh, you see this is huge and it's also very very complicated uh, shape welded under nuclear code and uh, each of these sectors uh, is made up of four polyvinyl segments and each of those again we, we assemble from so-called sub-assemblies and this is what you see here about six months ago not sure this is what a Tosto or Mangiarotti these are the main plants that are doing this in addition also Bellelli and Ensa in Spain are working on it. So we have assembled quite a large capacity, still fighting for every day to get this done fast because it is on the ETA critical path. So here you see these pieces uh, that make up the segments. And now this month, six months later, you see that the segments uh, are already welded together and you see pieces of the outer shell appearing. So that's where we are. So we're really getting closer, especially of the sector five, which is the first we have to deliver. And then comes sector four. However, it will take significant time and it's only in 21 that we can deliver, where, where we are fighting really for every month because we believe this is uh, either the critical path of ETA or pending how assembly is going close to the critical path. You also may know that the first uh, sector uh, was already delivered to the site by HHI, as uh, Bernard has told you yesterday. The cryo plant from the outside looks already quite finished with all these huge tanks. Uh, inside, in, at first look, not so much has changed. You see the nitrogen cold boxes, the compressors, the helium compressor stations, uh, and the helium cold boxes all around it. We have two compressors, each of them 4.3 megawatt. And when you walk through, it looks rather completed. So what are we doing? Why is it not finished? Because we're working on the commissioning. So part of the systems are already interconnected. Some parts are it's ongoing work. Uh, here you see one of the cold boxes from Air Liquide.
some new pieces moving in. And we have completed about 75% of the installation for the liquid nitrogen plant and 100% of structure and piping. So what is missing is really the commissioning. So let's move on uh, to the second plasma and other systems. We have the blanket first wall, the diverter, the neutral beam, the remote handling, diagnostics, and uh, below the ETA schedule. So here you see the timing for the second plasma systems, uh, where you can see that we've just recently started the procurement of the first wall panels, uh, where we have re received the first bids. So this is progressing very well. Uh, the diverter, uh, we already explained last year and at, uh, at the last uh, soft conference, you remember that Walter Tosto was showing the prototype di di uh, diverter cassette body, which in the end had such a high quality that it will probably become a real diverter cassette body. So what you saw when you went to Taumina at soft was really a piece that will really go into ETA. Isn't that great? The neutral beam obviously has started first because of the neutral beam test facility. and will take quite long until 2030 until all neutral beams are delivered. You'll see the progress in a minute. Remote handling, uh, we have a lot of prototyping going on and will soon pass the first contract. Same is, uh, well, for diagnostics, this is not so true. Uh, this is only the second plasma diagnostics we have already uh, started a lot of manufacturing of first plasma components. Diagnostic. So let's start with the blanket first wall. So the, the first wall blanket is uh, what covers the wall and protects it from the radiation from the hopefully very strong fusion reaction. FOE provides half of the 440 first wall panels. So some of you may know that ETA uh, starts without a cooled first wall for the first plasma and then we install these panels with cooling and with beryllium tiles to shield from the neutrons and this cooled first wall is produced by several domestic agencies we as FOE provide more than 200 panels uh, with the regular heat load uh, this is the project that we have now started and you can see the prototypes that we have produced already and we are now negotiating the final contract for the production. Let's have a look at the diverter where Fusion for Energy produces all the cassette bodies. These are cassette bodies and then some, some targets. Uh, you see that uh, Walter Tosto has started the production. So we had this wonderful prototype at last soft. And here you see the production work getting off the ground. Then let's get to the neutral beam heating systems where uh, we have the neutral beam test facility we run together with our Italian partners from RFX in Padua, Italy. Um, this picture you've seen before. So I remind that we have two uh, systems there. A spider, the negative ion source uh, to optimize such ion sources and then Mitica which is basically the whole beam line combined with another iron source. And here you see the different systems that go into this huge factory hall. Um, I don't go into much detail in the interest of time. Uh, just to tell you that we are now about 70% complete with Mitika and its cryo plant. You remember that Spider we inaugurated last year. Uh, so the uh, neutral beam test facility is really getting closer at completion. Here we see how we have installed the systems for NBTF cooling and this is not just for Mitica but also for the ether heat and neutral beams because they are captive components so they need to be already installed. Then we have the famous test make blanket modules here. Some of you will be in the audience who work with us on this because this is now a cooperation between Fusion for Energy and uh, Eurofusion. These modules, uh, as you know, are needed to breed the tritium. And uh, here you have already some preliminary design where we work with companies like ST Co, IDOM, Jacobs and Apave. And also the TBM box fabrication is uh, standardization is 
reaching a level of detail working with Atmosat and CEA. So this is a cooperation not just between Eurofusion and FOE, but also uh, with uh, industry already. We're, we are now, as you see below, in the preliminary design phase. And uh, this is the status of the helium-cooled pebble bed breeder HCPB. Uh, then we, the second one is the Walter Cooled Lithium Lead Breeder, WCLL, uh, where we are in the conceptual design review in mid-September. So this is actually happening between the recording of this video and, and you seeing it at, at SOFT. So this is happening right now. Uh, some examples of progress for the remote handling. The first assembly cast preliminary design. We've completed that together with our industrial partners. Uh, the monoball crane prototype is on the test bed. We are having lab tests on the one mega gray rated cameras uh, for the in-vessel viewing system uh, and the camera images uh, and in-vessel 3D reconstruction. During the, you can see this during the lab test on the ETA diverter. PFC and tests on the new digital valves. Now we're looking at the diagnostics. You know that this is quite a large program, so I also already mentioned it. And uh, the main achievement we've done is really paper. No, it's not paper. It's design of some very hard to build high tech components. So we've completed the so called PA, the procurement arrangement between FOE and ETRIO for the wide angle viewing system, the collective Thomson scattering, the bolometers, the radial neutron camera, the charge exchange recombination spectrometer, and the diagnostic pressure gauges. Uh, what does this mean? It doesn't only mean we have a contract. It means that we have a conceptual design uh, that the contract is based on. And this is really the work where IO and FOE have to agree, where we have this trade-off between complexity requirements cost schedule reliability and uh, that's why this takes so long it's a real development work and not just some paper uh, other first plasma deliveries of uh, are either magnetic field sensors and inversely cabling which are well on track as some of you are here, I want to really emphasize that we are working with 32 research labs and partners in 16 countries to build those diagnostics. And I can't read all of them, but you see, hopefully many of you who are sitting there and watching this see uh, your name and your logo here on the slides. And just let me say a very, very big thank you to all of you. And we also have more than 20 in the industrial partners in eight countries. Some of you may also be here. And another thank you to all of you. Now let me get to the FOE contributions to the broader approach program. Uh, you know that the BA phase one projects are close to completion. This is a scientific cooperation to pave the way for ITER assembly and operation where we are building together with QST, the Japanese uh, Research Ministries Fusion Organization, the JT60SA Superconducting Tokamak, which is about half the size of ITER, and will next spring at First Plasma be the largest superconducting tokamak in the world. And then we in Rokasho, in the Aomori province, sort of the very northern end of the Honshu Peninsula, we are building the IFMIF Eveda prototype, uh, uh, which is a materials testing accelerator, uh, where we are now in a phase where it's really working. It was quite thrilling last year. We had some problems. They, we have been able to solve them. Uh, so this is paving the way for the uh, Donors facility. And there we also have the IFERC research center with remote experimentation rooms and some other research facilities. On the JT60SA, here you see the completion of the assembly in April. So for the IFMIF prototype accelerator, we have now delivered 98% of the commitments. 
uh, working on the completion and validation of the first two commissioning stages. Uh, the SRF Linux assembly is ready to start and we're preparing for the phase B+, meaning that we want to reach 125 milliamps of deuterium plus beam at 5 mega electron volts and do this for more than 30 minutes. For the broader approach phase 2 program, uh, we have signed the agreement between Japan and Europe in March 2020. Commissioner Kadri Simpson, you see her sitting here in Brussels with a representative of the Japanese uh, Ministry of Science, MEXT. Uh, we will, in this program, uh, support the, jet, uh, the Tokamak JT6 CSA with procurement of critical components and spares and support the commissioning phase one. Uh, we will uh, continue the materials testing with IFMIF uh, with a cryo module assembly and the completion of the LIPAC. And uh, we will support the Fusion Research Center together with the Japanese supporting ESA JD60 SA and IFMIF EVEDA and consolidating the know how in reactor design. So I would like to not just thank you for watching, but invite you to the online questions and answer sessions. So it's uh, much better to talk than to thank, I think. So uh, let's have a chat and ask whatever you would like to know. I'm certainly ready to have more feedback from you as the research community. Thank you.